Muy buenas tardes, un saludo al misionero Miguel Hermúdez Marín, allá en Valencia, Venezuela. Good afternoon. Greetings to the missionary Miguel Bermúdez Marín, there in Valencia, Venezuela, in Febiba. To all the ministers gathered there, brothers and sisters, to the Reverend Jesús Barrolleta, to the Reverend Jairo Ordóñez, the Reverend William Romero, and the other ministers gathered there. In this national activity that you have, which is done every month, and today is the last one of this year, 2023, in which you have this fellowship, and thus give thanks to God for all the blessings that God has given us in this year, 2023. Today, you have that final meeting of the year. Others have it, are going to have it in this coming Saturday. Others have it on the last Saturday, on the 30th. So therefore, everybody in one way or another will have this fellowship to glorify God. And thus, give thanks to God for all that God has given us during this year 2023. You may please be seated. In this end time, God is carrying out the work of the harvest, of the harvest which is being placed in the age of the cornerstone and dispensation of the kingdom. And notice in this message, titled, Time to Mature in the Light of the Word, which was preached on May 13, 2011 in Talcahuano, Chile, our brother William Soto Santiago tells us, around page 6, Page 7, look, it says, That is why in the parable of the wheat and the tares, Christ says that a man, a sower, went out, sowed wheat, and then he came, that is in chapter 13 of Matthew, verse 30 and on, let us say, or 20-something and on. And then while he slept, an enemy came and sowed tares in the field. And when the time comes for all the seed to emerge, to be born, the servants of the Lord of the property of the state see that there are also tares, and they say to the Lord of the farm, Lord, how is it that there are tares if what you sowed was wheat? It is the same as saying, but how are these tares, that is, people who are not children of God, in the midst of Christianity, if what Christ has sowed is wheat, children of the kingdom? And the church is supposed to be for the children of the kingdom, the children of God, not for the children of the wicked one. How is it that the tares are appearing in the midst of the field, in the midst of the wheat, in the midst of Christianity. So we have been seeing many things in the midst of Christianity for these 2,000 years. What has happened? Christ says in the parable that the Lord of the property said, an enemy, an enemy man came and sowed tares in the field. Then the servants say, do you want us to pull up the tares? He said, no, for by pulling up the tares, you can also pull up the wheat. Now notice, we have talked about this. And our brother William tells us in a message 
that we have talked about regarding all of this. Notice, in the message, so that you can have it there as well. We have already read it, and we have spoke of it from memory, quoting this part. In the message, the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the Antichrist preached on August 5th, 2011. Look, he says, Christ was the one who knew well, clearly, that he had to die. And in order to die, certain things had to happen. Whereas someone close to him, who knew all the details of Jesus' ministry and his life and all the administrative part, the earnings and everything, was the one who sold him. Jesus Christ knew who he was from the beginning. On one occasion, he says, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? And he didn't point him out at that time. He left him alone. He didn't point him out. He did not say, I'm going to take this one out so he won't give me trouble. Notice what we were reading from that parable of the wheat and the tares and what our brother William is talking to us about there. There was going to come a stage where he had to die and certain things had to be fulfilled where one of them was going to rebel against Jesus, was going to betray him, was going to sell him and so forth. It was typified in when Joseph was sold by his brothers. It was typified when Joseph was sold by his brothers. Notice, if he took that person out before time, then that person was not going to fulfill the purpose for which he was there for. And the work of redemption had to be carried out on the cross. And there had to be someone there. And back then, that Judas Iscariot represents people of this time. And more Mark, that is, he also fully represents the devil, the Antichrist, the man of sin. He says, So he would be of the same nation, of the same people. And now Christ left him because he knew that he had a part to play. What if John or Peter said to him, But if you know who he is, take him out. Well, Jesus could ask him, which is what I said. When he himself told me this, and also other people who have told me at that time when he was still with us, look, he told me that also. So let's leave this alone. Don't start stirring up trouble, but leave that alone. He also told me to leave those people alone. And he also gave me that example. He told me, and did you want to do that? And notice he had talked about this on 2011 because that was around 2015 to 2016, that conversation we had. And that other person as well, perhaps some time before. But look, he had already said it in this message, he said. So Jesus could ask him, so do you want to take his place? Do you want to do the part that he's going to do? Surely Peter would say, no, no, not me. And then leave him alone. He has a part to play so that the work of redemption that I have to do may be fulfilled. So leave him alone. In clearer words, what he was interested is in money, so let him continue to do his part. But Christ kept quiet. He never said anything to them so that to prevent problems among the disciples themselves because they were very jealous and could hurt him. But notice that if he came to say openly that what he was going to do, the one that was going to betray him, because he was saying, but woe unto him, woe unto him who does it or what he is going to do. Now, everyone would have turned against Judas, and they could even 
killed him. Because at that time, imagine if that day at the end, when they went to arrest Jesus, Peter drew his sword. And if he had not dodged it, he would have torn off his head. Because that action was going straight for his neck. He took off his ear. So, in other words, they were very jealous people. And, in other words, being so jealous regarding their master, their Lord, they did not want anything to happen to him. That is why Peter says, such a thing shall not befall you. Every time he said, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed, he's going to be condemned, he's going to be crucified, he's going to be killed, and on the third day he's going to rise again. And Peter says, such a thing shall not befall you, see? In other words, if he knew who was going to cause that, they could surely harm Judas. Now, look, there is also a message preached by him in 1975, which he titled, The Influence of Another. He says, there's a part here that tells us about that kind of person. We are going to place this excerpt here as well, in this that we are reading this time. Look, he says, That's the hard part of today, because everybody wants to teach, everybody wants to be a teacher, everybody wants to say, this is so, this is so, I've been in the ministry for so many years, I've been listening to recordings for so many years, I have known Brother Branham for so many years, I have lived close to Brother Branham for so many years, but what good is that to you? It is of no good. It all depends on the revelation that comes from above, to be made known. Well, I believe that we are already are approaching something great, something wonderful that is about to happen. I do believe that before the investure, before the fullness of God, the Spirit of God coming to us in fullness, before coming on the day of Pentecost, Judas went out. He showed his colors and committed suicide. Now the suicide is spiritual. Now the suicide is spiritual. To sell the word. He sold it back then and then he killed himself. He committed suicide. Today to sell the word, to sell the right teaching for this hour, that is to sell Christ. And then they commit spiritual suicide. They commit spiritual suicide because of having sold the word. We know of many ministers who have already committed suicide. That was at that time. Notice how those cycles repeat themselves. And that happened back then in that decade of the 70s. And notice how that happens again in this end time, where many ministers have already committed suicide also, spiritually. Like Judas, spiritually, after having sold the word and rejected it for fame, popularity, you know, for money and for women. Now remember, by saying women at this time, women represents churches. For churches, for money and for fame or popularity are the three things that most attract the attention of the false anointed ones in these days. There is a part in the book of quotations which also says that each minister should take care of themselves. Every minister should be careful of money, women, and popularity, or money, popularity, and women. Now notice, women represent churches, which by maintaining the church and having that position there, then they give a false teaching to the church to continue with popularity among the people. Now, he goes on saying where we left off here on this message, time to mature in the light of the word, our brother William continues to say, 
He says, no, for by pulling up the tares, you can also pull up the wheat. See, there, if anything happened with Judas, they could pull somebody out and hurt some disciple. But look what he goes on to say here. And plunking the wheat without having gone through the different stages, what good is it to him? He does not have a wheat harvest. It is one. And the other, in other words, notice, if the tares were pulled out before the time, they were not ripe yet because they were still in the time of growth. They were in the time when they were not ripe yet. That is why this work could not be done. This work, that is one. And another, the reaping angels were not there. The ministries were not there at that time to do the separation, the segregation. That is why the work that is being carried out in this end time is a work that was not done before. And many stumble with all that. They say, but this one now comes to put distinction between one and the other. But notice, it is done by the word. Because notice what he goes on to say here. He doesn't have a wheat crop, is one. And the other thing, they pull up this weed and he can be the family of another person who is a son of God, who is wheat. He can be related to them. He can be the son-in-law or daughter-in-law of a son or daughter of God. And then, by pulling up this person, take him in out, they can also pull up the one who is daughter or son of God. Then they can cause a problem. Let everything in the field be still. Do not start doing that. What you want to do? Leave everything until the time of what? Notice. It's not that that's not going to be done. It's not that that wasn't going to be done. It's that that moment or time was not the time. During the age, it wasn't the time. During the part of the gap, it wasn't the time either. This is the time when that's taking place. Let us turn to Matthew chapter 13, verse 29 and on. Our brother William continues saying, But he said, Nigh, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together unto the harvest, and in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Now, this is a very important parable, because it is related to human beings, some represented in the wheat and others in the tares. Then, verse 33 and on says, of this same chapter 13, the explanation will be there. It says, let's see, chapter 13, 36 and on says, Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. Who sows the good seed? The Son of Man, the Lord. And now, in the parable also of the sower, in chapter 13, verse 3 says, And he spoke many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Now, we find that this chapter 13 is full of parables related to the kingdom of God. In this parable, the children of God are represented in the good soil, and the seed that is sown is the word of the kingdom. Looking at it from that other point of view, this work that would be carried out, that God would carry out. And now let's continue here on verse 37. He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man, that is Christ. The field is the world. Now the field will not be the children of God. The field now is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. As Christ is the corn of wheat, now the good seed are the children of the kingdom. They are nothing less than the fruit that the corn of wheat will produce. But he has to go through different stages. And the tares are the children of the evil one. 
Now, Christ, notice, shows that they are children of God and children of the evil one. The enemy that sold them, that is, who sold the sons of the evil one, who sold the tares, is the devil. And if the tares are the children of the evil one, then he who sows the tares is the father of the tares, which the Lord says is the devil. And the wheat, the good seed, which are the children of the kingdom, is sown or is sown by the good seed, the Son of Man, Christ. Therefore, they are the children of God through Christ. Christ is the second Adam, the father of that new race with eternal life. And that is the original race in which God thought a race with eternal life. And he goes on to say, on verse 39 where we are reading, The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. At the end of the dispensation of grace, At the end is when the harvest comes. When does the harvest come? At the end of the dispensation of grace. The dispensation of grace came to an end. Notice, the callings are over. The baptisms are over. The gathering is over. And the time of what is coming? Of the harvest. Who does the harvest? The reaping angels. Do you see? that there would come a time when that work would be carried out. It could not be done in the dispensation of grace, which and in which we were during the time of the preaching of the message brought to us by our beloved brother William Soto Santiago, who was showing us, revealing to us the things that would be, that would happen in that new dispensation and what would be done in that new dispensation what would be carried out in that new dispensation and who would be doing that work in that new dispensation the coming of the Lord the coming of the Son of Man with His angels at the end of the dispensation of grace at the end is that the harvest comes the harvest what was sown in that dispensation of grace is harvested. The fruits is gathered at the end of the dispensation. Notice, that is why he said, the door of the dispensation of grace is about to close. Come in before the door closes. And he kept repeating it and repeating it. The door of the dispensation of grace. Were we all in the dispensation of grace? And he repeated it, repeated it. The dispensation of grace is about to close. Because once the dispensation of grace closed, God would then enter to fully fulfill what was spoken, foreran, prophesied, of what the reaping angels would do at the end of the dispensation of grace. There is the end of the age. There is the end of the dispensation of grace, the end of the dispensation of the church, everything at the end. For that is what happens in the sowing. The end comes to be what? Well, the harvest. The fruit is gathered and the chaff is burnt. And then that serves as fertilizer for a new generation, a new sowing that is going to take place. And now, at the end of the world, or the end of time, is the time for the harvest to take place, the gathering of the sons and daughters of God. But before harvesting that seed or that offspring, before harvesting the fruit, what has to happen? Well, it has to be maturing. It has to go through that stage where it's no longer a church age, under any of the seven stages of the church that corresponds to the time of the night, for which those seven stages of the church corresponds to the time when the moon shone on them in each one of the stages, and therefore they correspond to the holy place of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, where the candlestick or lampstand was with seven lamps, representing seven ages or stages of the church, with a week dipped in oil inside that lamp lit with the fire of God with the fire of the Holy Spirit, illuminating each age of the church. Now he continues talking. That whole message is very important. But notice, it is at the end of the dispensation of grace that that work would be carried out, 
which is in this end time, that work that is being carried out, so that the sons and daughters of God would be positionally placed, because remember, Brother Branham said, when the bride recognizes what she is, when she recognizes her position, then the rapture will come. And we are placed in the age of the cornerstone and dispensation of the kingdom. Therefore, from one moment to another, when we are already with the fullness of the word in us, having already received all the teaching and all the rapturing faith, then God will give each and every one of us that eternal and glorified body because we are then in the right place to receive the blessings contained in this new dispensation. Time to mature in the light of the Word. See? And that work that was being spoken of that was going to take place, let the one and the other grow until the end of time. And I will say to the reapers, you see, There is already a divine order that comes from God through that instrument and to that instrument to whom God gives the commandment. See, I will say to the reapers, gather the wheat into my barn. Notice that work is a work by divine commandment, which is being carried out in this end time. Gathering that wheat in the storehouse, notice, is what God is doing through the ministries of Moses and Elacha. And we can use as a subject in this small chat, gathering or the ministries of Moses and Elacha, gathering the elect in the storehouse or gathering the wheat in the storehouse. It's been for me a privilege and great blessing to be able to be with you here in this meeting and to be partaker of this meeting today, Wednesday, December 20th of this year, 2023. There with you, Missionary Miguel Bermudez Marin and all the ministers, brothers and sisters who are gathered there in Feviva and all those that are and will be gathered also during today. May God bless you greatly and thankful to God for everything He has given us in this end time and everything He has given us in this year 2023. And like that beautiful song there by William Romero, which is what God is doing in this end time, filling those vessels. We are those vessels that God is filling with His presence, with His fullness. May God bless you, may God keep you all. And thank you very much again for your kind attention and continue having a happy day full of God's blessings.